Hello YouTube, thanks for tuning in, hope you're having a nice day and welcome to Stuart George's Home Movies. We've got uh, eight latest home movie watches all on physical media. Let's crack on with it. Let's go with these two first. Two modern films, two modern horror films as well. Let's go with this one first. Watch this one last night. 20, uh, 20, 2024, Abigail. The people who did uh, Ready or Not, Scream 5 was it, and Scream 6, bring a Rash and bloodthirsty new visual of vampires of Abigail. A heist team is hired by a mysterious fixer to kidnap the daughter of a powerful underworld figure. They must guard a 12 year old ballerina for one night to net 50 million ransom. That's basically what happens, but it all ends up pear shaped and in this desolate house and it's all boarded up and the shit goes down and it's great. Thoroughly enjoyed it, really did. Me and the wife watched it, she liked it as well, which is always good. Yeah, really did. Really enjoyed this one, you know what I mean? Good cast, Dan Stevens, Catherine Newton, Will Catplate, Kevin Durant, Angus Cloud, Melissa Barrera. Fantastic, man. The little girl who played uh, Abigail as well did a really good job. Really good job. Yep, it's got a right amount of horror in it, right amount of humour, so it doesn't go over the top with the humour. Thoroughly enjoyed Abigail. Really did. Highly recommended that one. Another horror and a newish one which is one 2023 but it was late 2023 it's eli roth's thanksgiving retro slasher modern retro slasher really enjoyed it the kills in here man Whew. man they're ghastly you know what i mean really are the kills are a bit over the top but uh yeah thoroughly enjoyed it it reminds me of like the 2000s slashers you know what i mean but it's got modern stuff in it with modern technology the phones and everything and yeah oh man really enjoyed that one thanksgiving really did and they're doing a the part two apparently so must have done well uh another one now this one what year we got here uh 2017 now i heard bad things about this really bad things the story is crap john Travolta's terrible the story wasn't that good and everything else and everything else and everything else but i watched it myself i bought it for myself it cost for like four quid you know what i mean so i didn't have high hopes for it but I'll tell you what i thoroughly enjoyed it I really did yeah john travolta's performance is really good yeah it ain't no saturday night fever it's not as like blowout or grease it's not his best performance ever but tell you what he did a bloody good job you know what i mean an unrelenting mobster epic no one got that far it's no good fellas it's not scarface it's not donny da uh, brasco but tell you what for what it was i enjoyed it more way more than i thought i was going to to be honest yeah john gotti Fair play. Good story. Good, uh, John Travolta is good in it as well, man. From 1976, The Eagle Has Landed. Michael Caine, Robert Duvall, Jenny Agata, oh God, uh, Donald Sutherland. Yeah, decent war film. Not, not a favourite war film, you know what I mean? And yeah, uh, Nazi strike force, plus to assassinate Winston Churchill. He enlists the help of Colonel uh, Steiner, Michael Caine. He plays a German in this. And it's a, it's a bit weird, the... Uh, British and uh, it's got uh, Donald Pleasance as well playing uh, Himmler in it, is it? It doesn't say on there, but I'm sure he plays Himmler. I'm sure he does. It's a bit weird because you've got like British and Americans playing Germans, but it's all right, you know what I mean? It's all right for a Sunday afternoon. The Eagle has landed. Jenny Agata looks absolutely gorgeous in this as ever. There you go. Not bad. It's all right. Two 80s horrors here. Now, <laughs> let's go with these two because they've got, both sort of got the same name. Let's go for the first one. We'll go with The Nest from 1987. Now look at the cover of that. Trust me, that never happened. It's never going to happen, is it? Bloody seven foot cockroach, bloody climbing all over a woman. Full sabotaging. But there you go. It's cheesy as hell. It's proper B-movie. And it's 80s. The dialogue ain't the greatest. But I'll tell you what, I'm a sucker for them. I really am. 80s horror. And if they're bad, I don't mind them. You know what I mean? They've got a bit of summer about them. You know what I mean? Some of the effects are all practical, so they're all right. Watching it, ooh, it made me itch and everything like that with all the cockroaches. Yeah, you don't see many kills in it with the cockroaches because they're proper cockroaches and about two inches, you know what I mean? They're not going to do that much bloody damage. Yeah, it's all right. The Nest, anyway. Directed by Terence H. Winkless. Yeah, B-movie. Yeah. Another one. This ain't the B-movie, but it's uh, from 1981, this one is. And it's a film by Armad West. This one's called The Nesting. Yeah, about a woman who, uh, she doesn't like to go out, she doesn't like to mix with people. So she buys this, like, country house in the middle of nowhere. And it's, like, haunted of 
it's like a massacre yeah a massacre has been there of uh, prostitutes and she has to find out what's going on there because she keeps having these visions and dreams and it's not too bad you know what i mean as a uh, paranormal haunted house film yeah worth watching worth owning and that bit there man with that side there look not bad cover actually with that side there what happens there that's a great effect a great effect look at that straighten his face right way down oh yeah great effect yeah the nesting worth watching if you like paranormal haunted house films from the 80s and yeah there you go this was on my uh films that i've never seen before which i'm embarrassed to say i've never seen it put it on the vote this one won and it's from if i get this right is it from 1992 the last of the mohicans with uh what's his name daniel day lewis and it stars uh, Russell Means, Daniel Day Lewis, uh, Madeline Stowe. That's what I was trying to remember. Bloody Madeline Stowe, and Pete Poffos, Possilbait, I think. Uh, yeah, fully enjoyed it. Really good. Yeah, bloody hell, I really did enjoy this one. Yeah, great plot, great bloody story, everything like that. Cinematography looks great. <laughs> one thing I did find though, he does that a lot. I've never seen Daniel Day Lewis run. He's just running the whole film. 90% of the film is just running around. <laughs> That's what I found anyway, but great film. Daniel A. Lewis, that's the Mohicans. Well worth watching that was. Uh, the last one, another horror one actually. Now this one is absolutely bizarre. 2013, Luke Evans, No One Lives. <sighs> this was a weird one. Didn't really get the story of the, him and the girl and where he came from, the backstory. Didn't really need to know really. But some of the kills in here, man, are bloody, oh, really are severe. They really are, yeah. If you like your horror and your kills, oh, my God. Has to be this year, one of this year's guilty pleasures, it says, from Empire as well. Yeah. Uh, the director, oh, God, I'm not going to pronounce that. Rufi Kamura, the director of The Midnight Meat Train, which I haven't seen. Uh, Luke Evans is really good in it. Some decent kills in it, man. And pff, it's a bit out there, you know what I mean? It's a bit, whoa. But if you like your horror and unquivocally magnificent, there you go. No one, no one hides. No one gets away. I'll leave it at that. No one lives. There's me eight watches. Thanks for uh, watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and all that. And yeah, put the comments in. Thumbs up. Cheers for watching. Cheers.